Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am Minister Javon H. Rembert, and I am excited about tonight's broadcast. I am lucky to have yours truly here inside of the studio. I want to let him take the time to introduce himself. Uh, I'm Minister Patrick Washington. I'm from Gaston, Alabama. I'm a Christian comedian and a playwright and the husband of one wife and also the youth pastor at Bruno Bad Baptist Church. I'm excited about being on the show tonight. Well, let's go straight into it here. Um, tell me a little bit about yourself. Oh, I travel the globe doing uh, Christian comedy and plays, and I love serving the Lord through different ways. Okay. Now, as far as your background, where, where are you from? What city? Tell us a little bit about your area. I come from Gaston, Alabama. It's a long way from Florida. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> I grew up in the church, so I know a lot about God, but I wanted to do something different from what we were all used to seeing. So that's what made me go into Christian comedy and doing plays and things like that. So Okay. Now, um, I've never been to your hometown. I can say I've only been through Alabama. So my question to you, I know you're speaking about the uh, Christian comedy, but mm -hmm. uh, is that something that's uh, well known in your area? Are you one of the first ones to do it? Or were you inspired by anybody? Uh, it's very rare in our area, um, but I am inspired by uh, my aunt, uh, Delaney Cunningham, who does a lot of Christian comedy throughout Florida, and uh, she kind of inspired me to do my own thing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So now, are you very well known in your hometown for uh, for comedy, or is it just something that's just kind of right in that area? Oh yeah, I'm, I'm very well known. I was the uh, class clown of my school, so everyone knows me to be the cut up. So it actually <laughs> started way back when. Way back when. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, do you think? Oh well, I guess the question is: Did you think back then that being the class clown? Um, I guess you could say being the laughing stock, did you think that would land you where you are to now? I didn't think so back then, but my teachers would always tell me, you're going you know, to go somewhere with this cutting up stuff. So, uh, And that I did. I went, started going places doing what I've always done all my life. So. Okay. So now let me ask you a question. You have a difference between a class clown and someone who's just bad. Which, <laughs> which, which bracket did you fall into? Both. Uh, more so the class clown. I was a good kid, okay. but I always found humor in things because uh, a lot of things that were going on in my home, uh, such as my mom's sickness and things like that, I would have to find joy outside of the home in different ways. So I would transfer that energy into comedy. Okay. So. Well, that was a good thing because the majority of times when you find a youth that's struggling or someone who's struggling mm -hmm. in a certain area, uh, usually it does not turn into comedy. Usually they take that energy oh, yeah. and, and the obstacle that they're fighting against mm -hmm. and they will find themselves getting into uh, other things. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm glad to hear that you uh, took the time out to channel that energy into a positive way. Oh, yeah. Now, um, I heard you also say something about playwriting. What inspired you to start writing plays? Um, at the time, we were having uh, financial problems at the church that I was attending and I asked my pastor if he would allow me to place together a skit. Um, and I did the skit and we, um, we raised a lot of money. We had a lot of people to come out and a lot of people were asking about the play and where did it come from. And it, it just come from my granddad. His character, he was a deacon, but he was also a mean kind of older guy. You know, so in other words, he was one of them type of deacons. Yeah, well, you can't play on this. <laughs> don't walk in the pool pit. Don't go over there. So I just made that, just brought that out. His life story, I just kind of brought it out on stage. So and everybody loved it. So, so it you know. in other words, you took the sickness from your mom mm -hmm. and channeled that into being a positive thing, mm -hmm. but then yet it's still reflected back on um, let's just say that good old grandfather yeah. spirit yes. and took that and added that with the hurt and the pain that you've been through and yeah. now all of a sudden that puts you on a stage. Mm -hmm. So my quick question to you, where have the playwriting 
landed to? Like, where, where all have you been? Oh, we've been to... Um, well, I know you can't name everywhere, but give us some. can't name everywhere, but Miami, uh, South Carolina. Uh, we've been to Mississippi. We've been a little bit of everywhere. Okay. Now, give us the name of some of the plays or the play. What was the name of the skit? Let, let's start with that. What was the name of the skit that actually uh, took off, took you off? I mean, that, that set you off. The skit did actually... Because I know you have done probably one here and one there, yeah. but what is the one that, you know, let you know, like, man, maybe there's something I can do? The Road to Redemption. Wow. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. What was that one about? The Road to Redemption, as I said, it was about, it was like my granddad, kind of sort of an older man, which is Mr. Otis, the character that I do now. I travel around doing Mr. Otis. And it was about him finding Christ um, before he passed away. Um... So he was church hurt, going through a lot of different things, which caused him to be mean, just as a lot of people are. And uh, at the end of his life, he found Christ. And a lot of people was asking, you know, how can I get this at my church? I really enjoyed it. And I was like, this kid was like 20 minutes. So it's but it didn't take a lot of time to turn 20 minutes into fame. Mm -hmm. So now the road, the road to redemption. Here it is, you know, you spoke about somebody and, and that's a very prominent thing going on right now and I want to make sure we touch on that for a little bit. Uh, you spoke about church hurt. Mm -hmm. Give me an example or some examples of what was in the skit that portrayed the church hurt. Oh, wow. Um, members just talking about each other, putting people down, uh, not lifting somebody up that was uh, alcoholic or that was on drugs, you know, we find ourselves uh, more so putting people down instead of bringing them up. Mm -hmm. And so that leads a lot of people away from church. That leads a lot of people uh, staying away from the house of God. So I was trying to do something to show people that, hey, we have to keep our mouths off people. You mm -hmm. know, no matter what they've done, no matter what their lifestyle may be, we have to lift each other up. Wow. Now let me ask you a question. What are, what are your beliefs in regards to uh, let's just say, and I know this is very, very, you know, very, very common. I can witness, I can, I'm sorry, I can speak about a time that I witnessed church hurt for myself, mm -hmm. but then at, at also can speak about a time that I have seen um, someone experience church hurt, and I, I can just speak now and say um, the time where I was in the back of the church, my own church, and um, a deacon was coming and there were some young guys came in from off the street and you know they were typical they had their the pants sagging mm -hmm. a little bit you know uh the shirts whatever and the deacon i don't, don't want to put his name out there but the deacon actually came to the guys called them out of the church mm -hmm. to the back of the church and told them if you don't have a belt on don't come to church and the craziest thing about this was these young guys just like five of them uh, they they were excited about coming to church. Mm -hmm. They they were actually um, how, how can I say they were like engaged. They were they were trying to get in a choir. Mm -hmm. We formed a boy step team, you know. And that was the last time, if I can be honest and remember correctly, that was the last time I seen these gentlemen mm -hmm. actually in church together. You know, one may that might have come here and one another will come there, but. You know, it's, so that's a very positive thing to, to speak about now and address now because that is a lot of a lot of this is going on. Oh yes, uh, and 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 I I commend you on that mm -hmm. because a lot of people are very scared yes. to touch that type of thing. Mm -hmm. So to even go past uh, talking about it, preaching about it, but to actually write a play about it, mm -hmm. that's a very 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 positive thing, and I want to commend you for that. Um, now let me ask you a question. Here we are, uh, the night before. Your another big debut. Mm -hmm. um, tell us a little bit about the the next play that you have going on currently right now. Okay, the play that I have going now is called "What Does It Profit a Woman," and this play is about a young lady. Um, she has everything she could ever want. She has a, the great job. She has the nice husband. She has the cars, but she does not have the gift of eternal salvation. So, wow! Through our getting, are we getting? Um, we can. What does it? What does it profit the man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? So we can get all that we can gather up, but it, is it going to help us in the end? It, I mean, 
Wow. So you have to just see the ending of this In order play. to get yeah. it. Mm -hmm. So that, that speaks volumes. Okay. You can have a car, you can have a nice car, mm -hmm. you can have the nice job, you can have, you know, a, 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 a excellent husband, mm -hmm. but then you, you're totally lost, mm -hmm. in other words. So give us some characters that's in the play. Okay, we have uh, <laughs> Diamond, who is the, the main character, uh, the, the main. <laughs> I can she, preach on that one. She's church hurt also. Okay. Um, and and, and I, I deal with a lot of church hurt because I've been there. Okay. I've been there. I've listened as a child to different people talk about people in the next room, and you know, it it, it traveled, it trickled down. Okay. And I was hearing this, and it was affecting me. Um, this is a, this is what all churches are: mess, um, confusion. So why why do we want a church full of saved people and just leave everybody else outside? We we need to be bringing in the homosexuals, the alcoholics, the prostitutes. We need to be bringing them in to show them love, show them that we can, you know, you you can you can, how can I say it? You can come to church mm -hmm. and let God change you. We can't change the individual. Wow. That's not for us to do. We want to bring people in. Hey, come on, Javon, and and we feel like I can take you and make you what I want you to be. Right. Instead of God using you for His glory. Right. And so. I deal with a lot of church hurt. Diamond is church hurt. Um, she has a maid, Janice, is kind of comical, and Mr. Otis makes an appearance in this play also. So, wow, they're in for a treat. Okay, now let uh, you, you you spoke about something that I gotta park the brakes here. <laughs> you spoke about which is trending right now: the homosexuals. Mm -hmm. You talked about the the, the prostitutes. What are your beliefs with when it comes to that? I understand you, you're talking about the play, but your personal beliefs, because I was just uh, one of my co-hosts. Mm -hmm. She just, uh, and, and I'm speaking about Prophetess Janethea T.C. Mack, uh, for those of you that follow her, she actually uh, spoke on this on her live video, mm -hmm. and it was very, very profound, some of the things she spoke about, uh, although I had my own twist to it. But what are your beliefs when it comes to the prostitutes and the homosexuals coming to church, not through the play, but through your personal belief. What what do you think or what do you feel should happen? I feel that that person should come to God for themselves. It's not for us to judge. Um, I have a lot of homosexual friends. I have a lot of lesbian friends, drunks, alcoholic, even drug dealers that have blessed me. I don't want to say. I don't know if that's the proper word, but have helped me oh, in my ministry more more so than people that have that I've been to church with. Right. They say, "I'm you're my brother, and we're gonna worship God together." But yet you put me down. Uh, we we go to church with people that say they love us, they care about us, they never sow into us, and they never they never follow our plays, they never support us. But we can go to the drug dealer, the the people everybody looks down on, and they'll bless us. They'll want to come to church. They'll want to worship with us. But we can't be so quick to shoot them down. Mm -hmm. Because you never know what seed was planted in them to make them be the way that they are. Right. A lot of people have been hurt. A lot of people have been touched the wrong way as children. You, you don't know. So I don't try to find out. It's not my, my business to know what people have done or what they're going to do. My only thing is to bring them to Christ. I'm glad you said that. And I want to, um, again, park right here and so into someone's life because I have come to a place mm -hmm. where I've realized, you know, again, going back to church hurt, having a lot of friends like yourself. Mm -hmm. I, my, one of my best friends is a transsexual. Mm -hmm. And um, I noticed that people who live their lives the way that they are, mm -hmm. to me, I believe they get total deliverance when it comes to coming up on the auction of God and the Holy Spirit. They, they, they serve God for real because they found themselves being who they really are. The problem I have experienced is the people who come to church are mm -hmm. more so still fighting who they really are. Oh, yeah. So what they do is they find a way to place the blame mm -hmm. on the Somebody people yep. that, that are coming to church <laughs> so they can cover who they really mm -hmm. are. But the truth of the problem, is, the matter is they have a problem with seeing someone being who they really are. Mm -hmm. So what I come to realize is when you're dealing with when a person that issues hurt to the people that's coming to church, it's because of the fact they're struggling with the same yep. demon that they're who they're talking about. Yes, sir. And that to me, I find that to be very, very, very crazy mm -hmm. because 
uh, that the church to me is a is a place for sin sick soul. Mm -hmm. It is a place for people that are struggling. My question is, why am I coming to church if I'm already saved and super holy right. and I'm going to heaven mm -hmm. anyhow? Why come to church? Come to church. You're, you're supposed to come to church so therefore you can get right. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people that come to church act as if they are already oh, totally right. saved That's and they, right. they already got their seat in heaven. Yes. So it's a problem to me mm -hmm. because now you're shooing out the people that could come and get redemption, could come and get mm -hmm. saved and get that, that the, get into the presence of God. So you're shooing the way. That's why the Bible speaks about be careful how you scatter thy sheep. That's and right. it's not only talking about the pastors, it's talking about the people in the church That's as well. Right. So I, I come to tell you, even to whoever is listening, whoever is following us, I don't care what somebody may have told you. I don't care what the enemy might have said that you still have a place in, in God's house. Mm -hmm. So I, I really commend you for that. And, I, and again, I, I want to tell you, I take my hat off to everything that you're doing, mm -hmm. especially when, you, when you're touching on topics and such. Because now uh, the number one question is is where do the people that's hurt? Where could they go? Where could they go? You know, it, it's it's crazy. It's like if I can't go to church, where can I go? That's right. And and and, and it's sad because again. There is no answer to that, you know, and, and you have people that yourself that has thick skin. Myself have thick skin. I know mm -hmm. I've been called everything but the child oh, of yes. God, you know, oh, yes. but, you know, at the end of the day, I'm glad I know God for mm -hmm. myself, because if I didn't know for myself, I wouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, that's why, uh, honestly, that, that, that's why suicide, the rate of yes. suicide is yes. skyrocketing, because people are already damaged. People are already hurting. You, they're already bleeding. And here it is. You're throwing insult and insult onto a person that's already struggling. That's so right. that's why they find themselves taking their own life because now they have no other way to go to. They have no, no else to run to. So that's why they give up. Mm -hmm. So I, again, I want to commend you yes, for, for taking and, and touching such, uh, I want to say, delicate topics. Mm -hmm. But these are things that need to be pulled back. You that's know. Right. Mm -hmm. So that, that's an excellent thing. Uh, and uh, for everyone that's following, listen, if you're in the Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Pompano, uh, Hollandale, Hollywood, Miramar uh, area, make sure you come out tomorrow, 1 o'clock. Uh, uh, in the name of the play for tomorrow, again, give us the name of the play. What does it profit a woman? I, if you're not a woman, still come. <laughs> <laughs> still come. But, okay, so my, my, my last thing is this. Okay, so we have uh, 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 the skit. We have the play. I, I want to touch on a person that I wish we could have brought here tonight. But this interview will be coming around the corner. Who was Otis? <laughs> Mr. Otis, like I said, is a character formed from my granddad who has passed on. Uh, he was always... So granddaddy gone and he came back. He gone and came back. <laughs> he came he was back always, He always could give you a laugh, but it was in a mean way. He was like a stubborn. He didn't like to share. He didn't want the children running. He didn't want them playing. So it was just always mean... The kids love it though. <laughs> in some kind of way, the kids fell in love with it, so we've been doing it ever since. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. So, besides, <laughs> I, I want to touch this before we, we turn this off. Besides Delana, which is your aunt, mm -hmm. uh, as she always say, uh, his favorite aunt. Yes. <laughs> and there's a lot of aunts, but she says she's the favorite. <laughs> Have, if you can look at anyone else that have arrived, anyone else who made it, who do you think inspired you the most? You have a lot of playwrights out there, Tyler Perry, uh, Winfrey. Um, anyone that you know that you can say that have inspired you as well, besides the man? I have a couple of people. Uh, my pastor, for one, um, because I remember when I first met him, uh, I was not saved. I was um, partying and drinking and drugging, and you know, ain't no shame in it. Mm -hmm. I was enjoying what I was doing. I folks that like they wouldn't enjoy. I was enjoying, um, but he he was already a preacher, and I would go listen to him preach, and he was like, hey, you need to straighten your life up a little bit. So, as because I had been brought up into church, this right. is all I had known, but it was all wrong. It was always mess. It was always drama. Business meetings was always somebody crying, leaving the church. So I left that. I didn't want no part of that. So I connected with him, and he was preaching in uh, one of his sermons, or whatever you do for Christ, let it be real. Wow. I was at the I was at church. I could play the drums. I could sing, make you fall out, but I didn't want nothing to do with Christ. 
But uh, he preached that sermon. I got saved. And from then, um, under Pastor Bolton and my pastor, Pastor Courtney Keith, we was just, it was just like a tumbleweed. Like I began to build up my relationship with Christ again because everything that I had been taught was wrong because people had been hurt and broken. And broken people hurt, make broken people. Re right. Reproduce broken people. So that's what we need to, I try to focus and work on me because I don't want to bring anybody in and, and break them down even more. I don't want to cause anybody to go to hell. With, like I said, whether they're homosexual, alcoholic, drug dealers, lesbian, ism, whatever. I don't want to bring somebody into the house of God and break them down where they don't come back and then they lose their life. Wow. And then they went to hell because of me. Now that blood is on your hands it's because a hand. lot of people don't think that's real. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people think, oh, if you're the pastor and somebody go to hell, that's on you. Mm -hmm. No, everyone you come in contact with, mm -hmm. God designed this path mm -hmm. for it. So everyone you come in contact with, you you got some mm -hmm. stuff to do. And I believe that, that that's a great thing, man. And, and that it's funny you should say that that's the sermon you heard because that's the same thing. And I'm not making this up. Mm -hmm. That's the same creed and sermon that my father lived by, Pastor Donald Miller. That's the same sermon he preached and it taught me something. And that sermon blessed me because it's in, in a sense, I don't care. In, in other words, what he told me was, I don't care what you're doing. Mm -hmm. If you're clubbing, you're going to club. club. Mm -hmm. If you if you're smoking, you're going to smoke. If you're mm -hmm. drinking, you're going to drink. If you're homosexual, you're going to be an homosexual. Mm -hmm. But he said, whatever you do for Christ, let that be real. Mm -hmm. In other words, give Christ some time. Mm -hmm. And when you're noticed, and, and this is what I come to realize, the more I begin to do that, I find myself scaling back slowly but surely mm -hmm. from the, some of the things that I were doing. You know, the clubs, the homosexuality, mm -hmm. everything. Everything I started doing, I found myself kind of scaling back from everything, little by little, mm -hmm. little by little, even friends. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you, oh, yes. Scale, you scale back, even from some family members, <laughs> you find right. yourself scaling yes, back a little, 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 little at mm -hmm. a time. And then next day you notice, wait a minute, this thing here is real, mm -hmm. you know? And and to me, I think that's, and, and, and Pastor, that was a good word. Because mm -hmm. whatever, you know, if if you still remember that now, that, that was a profound oh, yes. word, and that is so true. So that's something we want to impart from, I believe, from us to you, whoever's listening and following us. Whatever you do for Christ, let that be real. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a struggle. It's a daily journey. That's why the Bible let us know, man sent three ways, word, thought, and deed. So some things you can't help because it's still in your mind. Mm -hmm. But you have to remember, whatever it is that you're doing for God, let that be real. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about it. You're going to fall. You're going to scrape yourself. You're going to mess up. But at the same time, a just man falls seven times, but then he got up. So oh, you yes. remember, it, you, it, it is a way that you can get back up. Mm -hmm. Okay? So um, before we wrap this up, I have to ask this question. What's next? Tell us what could we expect from yourself, from Otis, you know, give give us give us what's next. I mean, you don't have to give us all of it, but just just give us a taste. What could what could we expect next after this play? Um, we just booked with Carnival Cruise Lines. Wow! And we'll be setting sail on August the sixth through the eighth of next year. Okay. And uh, Mr. Otis will be doing some comedy stand up, and I'll also be doing a play. I'm going to revise Road Road to Redemption, and uh, we're going to do that on the cruise next year. Okay, and now we're setting sail from, I'm saying we because I'm booking my ticket. <laughs> we're, we're setting sail from where and we're going where? Uh, Louisiana and we're going to Cozumel, Mexico. Okay. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay, how many days? How many nights? So just going to come right back? Or? I think it's three days. Three days, mm -hmm. okay. All right, so listen, if you, um, now we, we know who you are. What is the name of your production company? If anyone wants to look your production company up, Dynamic Outreach Ministries. Okay. Now, is that through yourself, or is that with your church as well? As it's just just your it's, company. It's mine and the church. We're linked together. Okay. On this one, yeah. We're not separating anything. No. We're gonna say right now, <laughs> clean to the cross. <laughs> okay. So now, I don't know how, but I know somebody else may want to know. If I want to join the cast or if I want to audition, mm -hmm. how do one go by auditioning for the cast? Okay, you can send a video to patrickwashington26 at yahoo.com. Okay, patrickwashington26 mm -hmm. at yahoo.com. Yes, what about Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat? Do you have any social media? Yes, Facebook. Facebook. 
Okay, and your name on Facebook is? Patrick Washington. Patrick Washington. So listen, ladies and gentlemen, be sure to look him up. Um, what about YouTube? Do you have a YouTube channel? Yes, we just started a YouTube page for Mr. Otis. Mr. O Mr. O <laughs> Mr. Otis is going to be a list. <laughs> Otis is a trip. Y'all got to make sure you follow him. Uh, okay, so now I just uh, want to make sure we, we uh, wrap this up on a good note. Um, we also have his pastor here inside of the studio with us and god bless you for coming pastor and i, I really want to say that's a good thing and y'all know it's already 11 o'clock almost 12, well a little after 12 midnight here in florida so it got to be a good thing for him to be out here on our stage again as we get ready to close out i want to ask to be sure to look him up patrick washington he's on facebook also i want to invite you to remember and ask you to come out tomorrow if you're in the surrounding areas come be a part of tomorrow's uh, production i'm sure it would not be anything that you would like to miss also the tickets are only ten dollars so it, it's not a big price um it's uh, the venue is not a large venue so it's going to be limited seating so again make sure you're there on time it starts one o'clock p.m tomorrow also ladies and gentlemen if you need the information look up on my facebook page i have been sharing it uh training it all day just for us to help promote this production uh, it, it's 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 a major thing to have someone drive all the way down from Alabama, not just himself, but his whole cast members have driven all the way from Alabama here to Florida just to put on this production. But if you would like to book him, please give him a call at 256-390-5995. Okay, give us that number one more time. 256-390-5995. Or, like I said, look them up on Facebook. But again, as I wrap this up, remember, I would like to thank you for following me, myself. And I also want to be honest with you, tell God thank you for even entrusting me with such an awesome task. Remember, we are here on this thing broadcast. It is here where we embrace, equip, and empower the people of God through the Word of God. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you. May God continue to bless and keep you is my prayer.